Uh, welcome back to the lecture. Uh, we had been uh, looking at in the previous lecture the notion of successive differentiation derivative of the derivative function. So, we had defined the concept of n times differentiability of a function if it is nth derivative uh, n minus 1th derivative exists uh, in a neighborhood of C. So, derivative of that uh, n minus 1th derivative at the point C mm, is the denoted by f n C. So, that is the nth derivative of the function. Let us look at uh, the example f of x is equal to x to the power k uh, for x belonging to R. So, this is the <coughs> x to the power k where k is a, a positive integer for example. Right. So, this uh, we know that this function is differentiable at every point. So, what will be the first derivative f dash of x will be equal to k times x to the power k minus 1. And when you differentiate again what you will get? So, that function is differentiable and the second derivative will be equal to f double dash of x will be equal to k into k minus 1 x raised to the power k minus 2. So, let me just uh, write this so that it becomes clear. So, let us look at the function f of x equal to x to the power k where k is a, a number say bigger than or equal to 1 that is fixed and here x is uh, bigger than x, x is any real number. So, we know that <coughs> from our examples of differentiation f dash of x is equal to k times x to the power k minus 1 for every x. So, this function f dash is a function now again defined from r to r. f was a function from r to r given by f of x is equal to x to the power k. f dash because the function is differentiable everywhere f dash is again a function and f dash of x is equal to k times x to the power k minus 1. Now, once again this will be differentiable if k, this is bigger than k is bigger than or equal to 1 say for example, this is again differentia differentiable and what will be the derivative of this function? It will be k into k minus 1 x to the power k minus 2 and so on. So, um, this will have derivatives of every order till uh, you can reach f n of x that will exist. So, k into k minus 1 k minus 2 and so on up to k minus n if you are looking at the nth derivative x raised to power k, mi k minus n, uh, n minus uh, x to the power uh, is k. So, k minus uh, so this will be x to the power k k x to the power k minus n. So, <coughs> that will uh, be the nth derivative. So, uh, the derivative, so this function will have derivatives of all order and in fact more also um, okay. when uh, x is equal to k then this will be uh, 0. So, so, this is example of a function which has uh, successive derivatives. So, in terms of the second order derivative the condition says the following. So, it says if f dash of x exists for a function defined in an interval if the second derivative exists in an interval c minus delta to c minus delta, okay, this is the, the first derivative exists. So, once the first derivative exists in a neighborhood, we can ask for uh, second derivative will exist. So, the condition is that the second derivative of the first derivative of the function is 0 at that point because to analyze local maxima or minima, the necessary condition is anyway that f dash of uh, derivative at that point must be equal to 0. So, the first uh, we have to ensure that. So, the condition is that the first derivative exists in a neighborhood of the point C and at the point C the first derivative is 0. If further, if the second derivative at the point is less than 0, then f has a local maximum at the point C. So, the condition is in terms of the second derivative, but to define the second derivative at a point we have to define say something about the first derivative at that point. So, we are saying first derivative exists in a neighborhood of the point C, first derivative is equal to 0 at the point C if this is satisfied and in addition the second derivative at the point C is less than 0. Then if all these conditions are satisfied then f has a local maximum at the point C. So, a similar condition holds for uh, the local minimum 
the first derivative exists in a interval around the point C, the first derivative is 0 at the point C and the second derivative is bigger than 0 at the point C, then the function has a local minimum at the point C. So, this is what is called the second derivative test. This gives you sufficient conditions to ensure that a function has got a local maximum or a local minimum at a point in terms of the second derivative. So, the first derivative should be equal to 0 and the second derivative at that point should be less than 0. These two will ensure that the function has a local uh, maximum at the point C. And similarly, if uh, first derivative is 0 at the point and the second derivative exists and is bigger than 0, strictly bigger than 0, then the function has a local minimum at that point. So, this is what is called the second derivative test. Uh, we will not be giving proofs of this, but we will use uh, these conditions, these sufficient conditions to analyze local maximum and local minimum of a function at a point. So, let us look at uh, one example. Um, recall we had looked in our previous example uh, while we are trying to analyze minimizing the average cost function of a product. The average cost, uh, average cost function is the total cost function divided by the uh, output x. So, is the total, co total uh, cost function and this is the um, x items being produced. So, this is the average cost of the function and that uh, in that example came out to be equal to this. So, to analyze now whether it has uh, minimizing or maximizing the average cost, to analyze that we looked at the derivative of this and we found that the derivative equal to 0 gives us the value x is equal to 30. So, at x is equal to 30, uh, the possibility of a local maximum or minimum. Now, to analyze uh, uh, we can analyze the property of the derivative, first derivative itself that is what we have done in the previous example <coughs> to analyze whether x equal to 30 is a point of local maxima or a minima. But we can analyze because this function is differentiable, second derivative exists. So, second derivative for this function uh, at x is equal to 30 turns out to be bigger than 0. So, second derivative for this is minus minus, so that gives you plus. So, 2 x the power goes minus 1. So, that is now x is minus 3, right. And when you put the value equal to 30, it turns out to be a positive quantity. So, the second derivative of the function average cost function at x is equal to 30 is bigger than 0. So, it must be a point of uh, um, local minimum for the average cost function. And that is what we had established using only the first derivative test in our previous uh, lectures. So, let us uh, look at some examples to analyze um, these points of local maxima minima. So, what is the strategy for analyzing whether a function has got a local maxima minima at some points? First of all, we have to locate those points where possibly the function can have a local maxima or a minima. So, uh, the, the points are as follows. First, f is a function, uh, let us say defined in a domain D. So, it can have local maxima minima at the following points. The possible points are 1, n points uh, in case uh, there are any closed intervals in D. So, n points of those are closed interval if there are any. Secondly, uh, the next set of points will be the points at which f is not differentiable. There are there may be points uh, in the uh, um, domain of the function where the function is not differentiable and the function may be having a local maximum or minimum at that those points. We had seen uh, some example in the when we defined the notion of local maxima and minima. And the third possibility of this uh, are the interior points, but in interior point our uh, necessary condition what should be derivative should be equal to 0. So, that gives us that if at an interior point of D uh, the function has to have a uh, local maxima or minima and the derivative exists at that point, then derivative must be equal to 0. So, this is the three set of points which need to be analyzed um, for a function to have local maxima or minima. That what we are saying is if f is defined in a domain D and if it has to have a local maxima or minima, then these are the only possibilities for the function. So, these points 
one is the end points of intervals if there are any uh, in the domain D. Second is the points where the function is not differentiable, end points or interior does not matter, the points where the function is not differentiable and the third is the interior points where the function is differentiable and the derivative is equal to 0. So, these points are normally called uh, critical points uh, uh, for the function. So, this gives a complete list of possible points for a local maxima or minima of the function f. So, these points are called the critical points uh, for the function. Normally, some books uh, call the only third as the critical points and all these points as total stationary points. So, these are possible candidates for the function to have local maxima or minima. So, strategy for analyzing local maxima minima would be for a function, first of all look at the function, look at the domain of the function, it may have some end points. So, collect the, together those end points and look at the points where the function possibly is not differentiable. So, that is a second bag of points, second collection of points and the third is the interior points where the derivative exists and the function is equal to 0. So, compute the derivative and put it equal to 0 and solve it that will give you the possible points uh, for the function to have local maxima or minima. So, one will analyze at these three points. So, these are the possible candidates where the function can have local maxima or minima and we will apply uh, the either the continuity test or the first derivative test or the second derivative test to analyze whether that point is a point of local maxima or local minima. So, let us look at an, an example to analyze this. So, let us look at uh, this example f of x is equal to x square minus 4 raised to power 2 by 3 for x belonging to real line. So, this is the function uh, which is uh, defined uh, for all points x belonging to the real line. Now, to analyze, uh, so first thing is to look at domain is the whole of real line. So, there are no uh, points where uh, end points or intervals and such things. So, first category of points are not uh, valid for this, not required. The second is look at the points where the function is not differentiable. Uh, are there any points where the function is not differentiable? So, uh, this function uh, point of non-differentiability r x is equal to uh, plus minus 2 because when you take uh, x is positive, then uh, x is uh, x square minus 4 is bigger than 0, uh, then the function will behave differently than when it is uh, less than 2. So, uh, at see x square equal to 4 equal to 0 is the value is equal to plus minus 2. So, those are the points where the function x square minus 4 will change its uh, uh, nature. So, accordingly, uh, this uh, left derivative of this uh, at these points 2 and minus 2 uh, will change, uh, will not be equal. So, this function is not differentiable at the points x is equal to plus 2 and uh, minus 2. Uh, okay, if, if you find it uh, difficult at present to uh, analyze this, I would say yes, that uh, sit down and try to analyze the differentiability of this function uh, at these points plus 2 and minus 2. Why this is not differentiable? So, try to compute the left derivative, try to compute the right derivative at plus 2 as well as at minus 2 and you will see that at both these points the left derivatives are not equal to the right derivatives. So, uh, for x not equal to plus minus 2, the function is uh, defined. So, let us uh, compute the derivative of this uh, function for the points when x is not equal to plus 2 or minus 2. In that case, uh, we can apply our uh, usual formulas of differentiation. So, the derivative is given by the power comes down 2 by 3 x square minus 4 2 by 3 minus 1 into by chain rule derivative 2 x comes. So, this is the using the power function the differentiation and the chain rule combined together gives you this derivative. So, the derivative is equal to 4 x divided by 3 times x square minus 4 uh, raised to power 1 by 2 that is equal to 0. So, 
this gives you at the points which are not equal to plus minus 2 that means I am looking at the interval minus infinity to uh, 2 in the open interval minus 2 to 2 and in the interval 2 to infinity the only one possible candidate appears to be uh, for uh, candidate for to be local maxima or minima and that point is x is equal to 0. So, we got 3 candidates to be analyzed for local maxima minima one is uh, 2 of them are plus minus 2 another one is 0. So, we get 3 candidates for critical points 0 and plus minus 2. So, let us analyze these points one by one. So, in the uh, interval if I look at x belonging to the interval minus infinity to 2 and in the interval 0 to 2 then f dash of x right if x is here is uh, in this if x is here then it is negative ok square will be positive. So, this quantity will be a negative quantity. So, f dash of x will be negative for x in this portion and if x is uh, in the portion 0 to 2 ok then uh, x is less than 2. So, this value again will be a negative numerator is positive, but this value will be negative. So, f dash of x is less than 0. So, in the these two intervals if x lies in these two intervals then derivative is less than 0. So, that means what that means in this interval the function is decreasing and in this interval the function is decreasing. So, let us uh, write that uh, observation that the function is decreasing in the interval minus infinity to minus 2 and uh, 0 to uh, uh, 0 to it should be uh, 0 to 2. And if we look at uh, uh, so this is 0 to 2 and if we look at uh, the interval 2 to infinity and minus 2 to uh, 0 then the derivative the sign of this is positive. So, as a result of this we get that the function must be increasing in this portion as well as in this portion. So, these two properties can be put together that the function is increasing in this uh, interval minus 2 to. So, the only portion we have not looked at is minus 2 to 2. So, let us look at in that portion also. Uh, so, the first derivative test applies and we have a local maximum at this point x is equal to 0. And uh, local minimum at the point x is equal to 2 and x is equal to uh, minus 2. So, by looking at the first derivative test by the nature of increasing and decreasing we have just uh, concluded that the function has a local maximum at the point 0 and local minimum at the point 2 and minus 2 both. Let us uh, apply these uh, ideas to uh, an example in uh, economics. Uh, so, the it is we are given that a firm's production uh, Q as a function of the labor is given by Q is equal to 6 L square minus 0.2 L Q where L is the number of workers and Q is the production. So, production depends on how many uh, how much labor is employed uh, in that form. So, what we would like to know is find the number of workers that will maximize the production. So, that is one question and we want to get sketch the graph also of that. So, find out the number of workers that will maximize the production and the production is given by dependent on the production is dependent on the labor and this is the uh, order. So, find the size of the workforce, how much labor uh, is there uh, for so that maximizes the average product of labor. So, we want to know the value of the labor that will give you maximum, maximum average product for the labor. And at that point we also want to calculate the marginal product of labor and the average product of labor at those points. So, so that is what uh, we would like to do. So, let us compute that to maximize Q as a function of L the first step is we should analyze this L is the number of workers. So, obviously, L is going to be strictly bigger than 0, right. So, uh, though it is going to be L is going to be uh, a integral values. So, we will for the sake of mathematics we will assume we make a assumption that L is a number which is a positive uh, real number. 
So, q as a function of l is given by this and mathematical problem is to maximize this. So, for that we look at the derivative of q. So, 6 l square the first term the derivative is 2 into 6 12 l minus 0 0.2 3 comes down. So, 3 time multiplied by uh, 0 0.2 into l square. So, that is 0 0.6. So, the derivative d q by d l is equal to 12 l minus 0 0.6 or 0 0.6 l, uh, l square. So, to find out the possible candidates uh, for l such that d, uh, this q is maximum we have to put the derivative equal to 0. So, find out those critical points. So, when we put it equal to 0 that means from here either l is equal to 0 because l will come out you can take a factor l into 12 minus 0.6 l that gives two values l equal to 0 or l equal to 20. Obviously, there is if l is equal to 0 there is no production and we are trying to maximize. So, uh, dis, uh, we discard the value l equal to 0. So, the only possible critical point is l is equal to 20. So, at l equal to 20 we would like to know whether the, this q is maximum or minimum. So, uh, we can uh, look at uh, d q by d l. So, that is given by this. So, we can analyze the nature of uh, the derivative for l on the bigger than 20. So, this quantity when l is bigger than 20 this will be negative. So, this will be decreasing for all points uh, uh, all points on the right of uh, right and uh, increasing. Uh, so, this is uh, written wrongly here. So, when l is less than 20 this value uh, um, when l is less than 20 this value will be uh, positive. So, l is always positive. So, this product is positive. So, uh, on the left side it is positive. So, function is increasing on the left side and decreasing on the right side when l is uh, bigger than 20 this will become negative. So, decreasing. So, this is opposite uh, written this is a typo here. The function is increasing at all points on the left and decreasing at all points on the right of 20. So, uh, this is a that means l equal to 20 is a point of uh, maximum, but if we even if we want to analyze at 0, uh, 0 will be a point of local minimum if you the negative values of l are allowed, but this is a graph of the function when for l bigger than 0 you can see at the point 20 there is a maximum value. So, this part of the graph is just for the sake of mathematics that negative you will and uh, this is also interesting to observe that our function uh, q as a function of l is a cubic power is 3. So, possible there are possibilities of uh, two values graph uh, cutting uh, at two values in fact uh, three values. So, uh, it has two coincident roots l equal to 0 and one uh, other root at some other point. But from our point of view of uh, the problem of economics uh, at l equal to 20 when the labor size is 20 uh, there will be maximum production. So, the production you can see from here the production is increasing right as the labor increases when it reaches 20 there is a maximum production and then the graph drops down starts dropping down that means when the labor increases beyond 20 uh, the profit will uh, no, sorry uh, the production will start decreasing. So, uh, maximum happens at the point l equal to 20. So, this is how you can interpret the graph also. The average of q as a function of l will be q by l right the average is total divided by that quantity. So, when you divide you get the function uh, 6l so l cancels here so 6l. Uh, minus 0 0.2 uh, 0 decimal 2 l square the one value will cancel here. So, now it becomes a quadratic equation is a uh, equation of degree 2. So, uh, when we want to analyze uh, whether what will be the point where it can have a maximum or a minimum it is differentiable everywhere we find the derivative. So, that will be 6 minus 2 multiplied by 0 0.2 that is 0 0.4 l. So, the critical point will be when this quantity is equal to 0, this one equal to 0 point is this uh, here it is 0 is not written there. So, equal to 0 that is l equal to 15. 
So, that gives you the value L equal to 15. When the labor is 15, the average uh, production will be uh, average uh, production of as a function of labor will be uh, will be maximum for L equal to 15. Also at this value, why it will be maximum because at second derivative for this, if we analyze, uh, it will be uh, uh, second derivative for this, it will be 6. Um, uh, first derivative is 6 minus 0.4L. <clears throat> so, when I differentiate this again, this will give you 0 and 0.4L will give you 0.4. So, the second derivative of average of production with respect to the labor is minus 0.4 which is negative. So, that means L equal to 15 is a point of local maximum for the average production product function. So, we have found uh, maximizing uh, the product for a labor and the average maximizing for both of them, right. So, now let us compute the marginal of uh, uh, marginal of uh, production for L uh, for the labor when labor is 15. So, you recall the derivative uh, for the production was 12 L minus 0.6 L square that was the derivative. So, that is the marginal if we have to evaluate it at 15. So, put the value 15 and you get it 45. And similarly, the average uh, uh, of uh, L at uh, 15. So, this is uh, this value, this average is 6 minus 0.4 L. So, that evaluated at 15 when you compute that comes out to be 0. So, if you at the point uh, 15, the average uh, co cost of production, the marginal is 0 whereas of the pro average of the production is equal to 45. So, that is how you calculate the marginal and we have already seen what does the marginal indicate. So, you can calculate the marginals and uh, apply them uh, an, 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 marginal analysis that we had done earlier can be applied. One can also uh, relate these things to between average product of labor and marginal product of labor. So, let us look at a production of a function of labor given by Q as a production of L. That is what we had in the previous example also. So, the average production will be A P L Q by L. So, in this we are not uh, looking at particular examples, we are looking at a general function and trying to find a relation between them. So, if we analyze this, assuming uh, this all everything is differentiable, the derivative of the average production as a function of L will be equal to by the quotient rule, it will be L square L into derivative of Q by L minus Q into derivative of L. So, once you simplify that, so this is 1 over L dQ by uh, dL minus Q by L. Now, dQ by dL is a marginal of production, right? So, it is MPL minus APL divided by uh, L. Right. So, this denominator L is Q by L that is average. Uh, so, this is average, the average production function is given by this. So, that is AP of uh, L, average production of L. So, uh, let us look at this uh, a bit further uh, where MPL is the marginal of the product of labor that is what we said dQ by uh, dL. So, once that is uh, obtained, suppose the average product of labor assumes the maximum value at L naught. So, let us assume whatever was the relation, right, and the maximum value is obtained at a value L equal to L naught. In that case, if you put that value, that means 0 is equal to derivative of APL divided by uh, derivative of APL with respect to L at the point L 0, right, because it is maximum. So, by our theorem, if there is a maximum at a point, then the derivative must be equal to 0 we get this is equal to 0 and that just now we computed it is equal to this. Um, that average uh, the derivative of APL with respect to DL was 1 over L naught, MPL at L naught and APL at L naught. That means, at L equal to L naught, the marginal production at L naught is equal to the average production at L naught. So, these two are equal. So, that is a general formula that one uh, gets. We can also uh, uh, look at uh, the total profit and uh, function at the max points of maximum minima. Total profit pi, uh, we denote by pi, this is a Greek letter pi. 
is total revenue minus the total cost. So if we uh, look at, uh, assume that everything is differentiable, so that will give you derivative of total profit is derivative of total revenue minus derivative of total uh, cost, Q, right, with respect to Q, total cost with respect to Q. So we are differentiating this, assuming each is a function of Q. So this is TR, so derivative of TR is the marginal of revenue, derivative of TC is the marginal of, uh, marginal of uh, total cost. So MR minus MQ and at the point of uh, uh, maximum, when, so assuming pi assumes the maximum at the point Q0, we put the value here. So when it is maximum, we will get 0 is equal to this evaluated at Q equal to Q0. That means MR <coughs> marginal of revenue at the point of maximum is marginal of the cost at the point uh, of maximum Q0. So that gives us uh, a relation when both are equal at the point of maximum. So if MR is bigger than MC, so here also we can, because of from here for this formula, if MR is bigger than MC, that means the derivative of um, total uh, profit with respect to Q is positive. So pi must be increasing. That means the profit will be increasing. So this is the interpretation if marginal of revenue is bigger than of marginal of cost, then the profit will be increasing. That is a conclusion that we get. And if it is less than, then it must be uh, decreasing. So that is the uh, analysis for the marginal that we get. So uh, we'll uh, stop here today by recalling that we have looked at the first derivative test, we have looked at the second derivative test, and we had applied these things to some examples in mathematics, purely mathematical examples of given a function, how to find out how to find out local maxima and minima. So the possible candidates we said are the points where in the domain where uh, these are endpoints possibly, that means there are some intervals in the domain, so endpoints. Second possibility is the interior points where the function possibly is not differentiable and the interior point, third category is the interior points where the derivative is equal to zero. So these three categories of points are the possible candidates for maxima and minima. And to analyze them, we apply uh, the, the tests for maxima, minima, the sufficient conditions. The first one was the continuity test. The function is continuous at that point and the first uh, continuous at that point and increasing on the left, decreasing on the right in a neighborhood than local maxima, decreasing on the left and increasing on the right in a neighborhood then it is local minima. So that was the derivative test. Correspondingly, we had a first derivative test, just increasing, decreasing is interpreted in terms of the derivative. So the function is continuous at that point. The function is differentiable in a deleted neighborhood of that point C. That means on the left of C and right of C, the function is differentiable. On the left, if the derivative is less than zero, then the function will be <coughs> decreasing. And on the right, if the derivative is bigger than zero, so that will be increasing. So if it is decreasing on the left, increasing on the right, so it should be a point of maximum, local maximum. So that is in terms of the first derivative. And finally, we had a, a second derivative test that the function has is defined in a neighborhood, has a first derivative in a neighborhood of that point C. First derivative is equal to zero because that is a necessary condition anyway. So first derivative is equal to zero and the second derivative less than zero implies that the function has a local uh, maximum at that point. And similarly, the first derivative equal to zero at that point and the second derivative uh, bigger than zero implies it has a local minimum at that point. And um, these tests we applied uh, to some of the examples uh, in our scenario of economics, commerce and management. And the last one uh, was about uh, relations between uh, profit and uh, marginal of revenue and marginal of cost. So we will stop here today and we will continue this analysis in the next lecture. Thank you.